Hey guys, it's Dave coming to you from the dog yard here in uh, Southern Maryland. I'm just uh, trying to get something quick because I wanted to get the sunset as it comes through the trees there. So um, you can see Echo right there. And the others are out and about. But it's about 7.15 Tuesday evening. Absolutely a perfect day. I know a number of you said the same thing that... If you just look around, I'm going to pan you around and let you see the yard real quick. But it's just been a perfect day. I think it was a, I think it was a high of 80, maybe. And the rest, the next four or five days, going to be like a high of 75. No humidity, slight breeze. It's almost chilly. Just crazy right now. But what a great day. So anyway, just uh, take a minute and just check that sunset out. So that's one minute I spun you around so you're kind of seeing what I see as I sit in the chair. You can see that sunset hitting the top top of those trees. So this looks so good in that deep blue sky. Let's see, you got Sasha running around. You got Finn right here. You got Echo right over there. Where are you, Echo? And you got Chance way out there doing whatever Chance does. Even he doesn't know. There's Sasha. Chilling. So anyway, this is literally what I see. As I sit here and talk to you. Enough of that. Alright guys, I kind of rushed into the start because of that sunset. So I'm not really ready. So let me get my, get my little bag of goodies. This is what I travel with out here into the yard. <laughs> My faithful torch. What have I got? I got a Perdomo Habano Maduro. I don't even know where I got it. But it's got that beautiful dark finish to it. Maduro wrapper. Really quite a beautiful band too. All right. In the traditional punch. I always get my punches off center. I don't know how I do that, but it doesn't matter how hard I try, they come off center. So look, we're going to be uh, high class and take the foot band off before I light it on fire. And uh, since we still got some sunset going, I'll just, you can watch me uh, fire this guy up. It's a tighter draw tonight. Definitely tighter than I like. I don't feel like one should have to work to smoke a cigar. All right, we'll let that go for a few minutes. Looks like our sunset is coming to an end. Catch a little bit more of it for us. I'll be down here in the corner for us for a while. It's got a nice taste to it, that's for sure. I know I'm sitting here too quiet, not narrating. It's like watching that little bit of sunset. It's got to go through 
probably a good half mile to a mile of woods for us to see that. So I find that kind of kind of fascinating that it can shine all the way through that much woods. All right, I'll put you out of your misery. Be back in a minute. Well, guys, kind of like last night, I don't really have anything to say. Took me 28 minutes yesterday to not say anything, by the way. I do realize that. It's nice to be able to be back out in the yard and not stuck on the front porch. Man, I with this wish this was weather vision. I wish I could somehow impart to you how good it feels to sit out here in the cool evening air. No humidity. What is it, August 20th? August 20th. It should be like 95 and 100% humidity right now, and it's more like 75 and no humidity. Crazy. So we'll just sit here and take advantage of it. To have the pleasure of sitting here and smoking a cigar with you guys in this environment, it is hard to express how good it feels. How addicting it really is. Not so much this, but just this. Sharing it with you, sitting here with my dogs, Enjoying the sunset. Beautiful evening. Wow, it's just addictive. It's, uh, it's hard for me not to come out and do this. And sharing a great cigar is really just a bonus. Really just the icing on the cake. It's, it's really the excuse I use to do these videos. So guys, I just had another great day today. Tuesday was awesome. Had a great day in the market this morning. I really enjoyed my trading today. My wife's Audi Q7 has been serviced. My wife's Audi A5 has been serviced. And now my big, that big giant F250 is in for service. So the, the vehicles that we drive a lot are all be taken care of. And then we'll go, we'll get them cleaned over the next few days and I chopped down the remaining mountain of paperwork. I'm done. I'm caught up. All my emails are caught up. All the bills are paid. All the check uh, accounts are balanced. Um, all the scanning's done. All the filing's done. Man, it feels good. My desk in my home office is clean. And my desk in my, uh, my man cave or my paddock is really clean too. So... When I have clean desks, I think better, I act better, I'm more productive. Like I did that uh, video earlier today about my top 10 blends and about that little stupid $6 grinder, plastic grinder I use. <clears throat> but I had space on my desk, I had space in my mind. I, could, I said to myself, hey, it's time I did a 10, top 10 blend because I talk about it so much. And I've been using this grinder every day for the last four or five days. I should show people exactly what I do with it and how effective that thing is. It's funny how you guys, so many of you wrote back and said that you guys use grinders as well. I didn't realize it was so prevalent in the pipe community. I knew it was in the weed community. I just didn't know it was in the pipe community. But I love it. I'm a huge advocate of it. I'd tell anybody to use one now, especially if you're a flake man and you don't particularly like folding stuff and you like converting the flake into some sort of ribbon cut, you know, shredded sort of thing. So we're great. Anyway, I was able to do, I'm able to do videos like that from the paddock when my desk is clear. Like I said, it a cluttered desk does not, my mind does not work well in clutter. My mind works exceedingly well if I'm in organization and cleanliness. So I work hard to keep it that way. What's the old, what's the grandma saying? A place for everything and everything in its place. I like that a lot. In fact, maybe that's a springboard into a subject tonight. I, um, 
I'm just saying I do better when everything's in its place, when I'm not surrounded by chaos. Saying it more positively is when I'm surrounded by neatness and things in their place and in order. It doesn't mean everything has to be perfect, but my immediate, immediate surroundings, like if you ever walk into the paddock, you would say the, see the, the center of the three warehouses is the man cave, and it's in pretty damn good shape. Um, the carpet's vacuumed, the trash is taken out, the desks and work tables are clean, the, the cellar uh, shelves are organized. You know, it just looks good. The other, the, <clears throat> my prepper side, side number one is in pretty good order as well. My tool side, warehouse number three, is a little bit still a little bit disorganized. I need to work on that. But one thing that um, I know some people struggle with is being productive when they're amongst chaos. And I certainly fit that bill. Like, is my bed made? Is my laundry done? Is the grocery shopping done? You know, is... um. Is the food pantry full? Um, you know, are the cars taken care of? Or do the cars have gas in them? Have I hauled all the trash to the dump? All the basics, what I call the basics of life, are they all done? And if they are, my mind works great. You know, I get to think about things and come up with ideas and do different things. But I have to stack those more advanced things on top of having my shit together at the more basic elemental level. And um, that's what I've been doing. I've been back now eight days. I got back a week ago Monday. I really spent those seven or eight days kind of getting my shit together at the most basic level. It also allows me to respond to things more timely. Like if I need to jump on a plane and get out to Wyoming and help, you know, get the clear fire break around the house. I can get, I can leave tomorrow and I'd leave here in totally good shape. I wouldn't be leaving a giant mess here. I just function better like that. I don't know. Very interesting how you guys do. Can you just sit in the middle of kind of a pile and work just fine? Or do you have to be, have organized around you as well. And I kind of always been that way ever since I was really in high school. So talk to you about another thing is liquor preparation. You know, if you watch, listen to, read, study anything about being a prepper, one of the things they advise you to prep on are, are things you like, you know, like sweets and treats and um, and uh, and alcohol. And I've taken that to heart. I've shown you my weapons and my ammunition and my body armor and my medical supplies and knives and all that. But I haven't really shown you my food supplies, my water supplies, or or my alcohol supplies. So, you know, I don't know. Five years ago, I started prepping what my friends and family like alcohol-wise, and we keep probably 10 to 15 bottles of everybody's favorites in there. But my family knows it's there. And so for the last year, they've been pilfering it. And um, I went down the other day to grab a bottle of Tito's, and instead of having 10 or 12 bottles, I have like two. I was like, holy crap. So I've been going to the store. I've been buying like four bottles at a time every couple of days. And thank God it's a different clerk each time. Because if, <laughs> if I was buying 12, 12 bottles of Tito's from the same woman and across two or three days, definitely flag me as having a drinking problem. <clears throat> I don't know if you can hear my dogs here. I'll spin you around. Of course, now the camera's pointed at them. They're not going to bite.
I do not know why they're digging up the grass right there. Anyway, this is what it's like living with these guys. Hey, we'll give a quick Uncle Willie update. It's a it's a report of a report. I've not talked to Uncle Willie directly, but uh, someone that talks to me directly has actually got an email directly from Uncle Willie saying all the prayers have worked. I think that's all his email said, but. I'll take that as a positive. No news is good news. And just the, the one-liner that all our prayers worked. So um, anyway, I'm giving you second-hand information. But I, from what I understand, Uncle Willie is at least able to email now. So that's good news. I'll give a slight rant today about cable TV or paid TV services. I was so proud a couple of years ago when I cut my cable. I just cut it, and I went with Google TV. It was reasonably priced, and you got quite a bit with it. And over the two or three years since that I've done that, it has completely screwed us again. So um, uh, Google TV really doesn't come with anything. You have to upgrade several levels to get any of the TV packages. But then I also realized that some of the shows you want to watch are on Apple TV, and now some of them are on Apple TV+. Plus. And some of them have moved from Apple TV to Paramount. But Paramount's on now. Sometimes you have to have Paramount Plus. So now you're paying for Google TV, Apple TV, Apple TV Plus, Paramount, Paramount Plus, Hulu, Netflix. I mean, it's just amazing now to actually watch the shows you used to be able to pick up on cable. You got to have about eight different services now. So you're back to several hundred dollars a month. So I'm a. Uh, I'm looking for a different solution at this point. My wife and I watched, watched the first two hours of Kevin Costner's movie Horizon last night. It's a three hour, it was called part one, which I didn't realize until I turned it on, but it's part one is three hours long. We're two hours into it, and it's a pretty good movie, but boy, is it slow. It's slow and detailed and kind of gruesome. I can't recommend it, and I can't recommend you not watch it. I'm pretty much flat neutral on it. My wife is quite disappointed, actually. I think I'm going to struggle to get, in front of the, get her in front of the TV to finish it up tonight. And I'm embarrassed to admit I got this far into the video and just now I remember to mention Chuck and Piper. And you know, Doug came back today. <clears throat> I can't remember. It's been months since we saw a video from him. And he's doing it from inside his truck. He's driving. He's got a job as a truck driver. He's on the job and he's doing videos from his truck. Thank God. That man has been through a hell of a year. So it's just good to see him come through the other side of it. So anyway, welcome back, Doug, man. I've missed you, and um, I'm tickled pink that you're driving. You're doing vids from it. Dixie's in the truck with you, and that you're you're off at making money as a truck driver again, buddy. So congrats, and welcome back. I missed you. I told you guys the other night to sell your toys, and um, just so you know, I practice what I preach. Three cars rolled out of the paddock on Thursday morning. Once we have those all buttoned up with the sales, we'll uh, probably roll two or three more out, by certainly by the end of the year. Just feels good to get rid of some of the toys that I don't use or enjoy as much as I used to. Having the Wyoming house has really changed my life considerably. And having Sean live in um, Denver has changed my life quite a bit too. I don't have nearly as much time to play with cars. So it's nice to go ahead and sell the things that you're not enjoying. Rather have the cash making money for me than sitting in cars right now anyway. 
I just want to be tell you that I don't just say sell your toys or sell your stuff, sell the stuff you don't use. I actually do it. These two really love each other. It's kind of crazy. True brother and sister now. God damn. Well, guys, it's chilly enough. It's actually gotten a little bit chilly. Not chilly, it's stupid. I'm sitting down there in a t-shirt. It's not chilly at all. But it's gotten cool enough out here that it makes me long for the fireside chats. Probably won't do a fireside chat from here in Maryland until November, until the Thanksgiving week, probably. Because um, over the next four weeks, it just won't stay this nice. It'll get hot again, and then I will depart. In about four weeks, unless we have a fire problem, depart in four weeks and head to uh, head to Wyoming for six or eight weeks. And um, it'll certainly be fireside chat weather out there, but it'll be inside. Won't be that real nice out there at the fire pit like it is here. This is the first time I've even thought about a fireside chat. Here in Maryland since, gosh, March or April. Hey, and something else that came out, I think it was yesterday or Sunday afternoon, I can't remember, but Harley-Davidson capitulated on their uh, diversity program, said they're killing all, uh, all instances of diversity and equity in their supply chain. They're going back to making motorcycles, so... I don't know if it's too little, too late, but it was nice to see they kind of went the way of tractor supply. Hey, we're we're done with that. It didn't work. We apologize. We're moving on. Now Harley Davidson, for some reason, only Budweiser has chosen not to not to say anything. But they're down twenty seven billion dollars since they went woke. They went from the number one beer produ provider producer to number three in this last year. So I know Scott at Hoosier Marshall was pushing on that pretty hard. You know, he's a Harley man. He was broken, disgusted by the company. So kudos to Scott. So that, you know, I don't know if this will repair his faith in the company or not, but he put out a pretty. Uh, Pretty brutal uh, anti Harley Davidson message. I think Saturday, and then they must have saw it because they they saw it, and the next day they said, "Holy shit, Scott's mad at us. We better capitulate and write a letter." And they did that. So Scott, nice job, buddy. All right, guys, that's long enough for a goddamn thing to say. Let's not drag it out and extend your torture any further. Let's end this. I'll shut up. I'll get this uploaded. Gosh. May God bless you. May God turn his ear to your, to your prayer and to those around you. May he make his face shine upon you. May he bless your life and those around you as well as he blesses mine. Guys, I uh, hope you had a great Tuesday. Hope you got a great rest of the week sitting in front of you. Hopefully you got a great weekend planned. Guys, that's it. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye, everybody.